what's good, YouTube, man? It's your boy Gary with another Fan TV, man. Back at this video with my guys, having the having, you know, that time of the week. Uh, we do the preview. Ravens, Bengals, Sunday night football, big game coming up. We got to talk about the X-Bag, the both sides of the ball, what we expect. But given what's going on this week, I think we got to start off with the injury report, man. So I'm looking at the Ravens injury report. Rashad Bateman is out. Justice Hill is out. Ben Cleveland, out. Justin Houston, out. All right, so these, well, so besides Cleveland, these are three guys that really contributed to the Ravens so far this year. They're out. Uh, Marcus Peters, looked like he picked up an injury during practice because he went from full to limited. He has a quad injury that's obviously very different from the knee injury that he suffered at Cubby Mall last year. So that's a new injury. And Ronnie Stanley, he was full the last two days. And then today, DMP, I've said multiple times, until he's active, he's out to me. I don't even consider it, to be quite honest. Um, and that just is what it is. I, ain't, I don't got no other opinion about Ronnie Stanley. You know what I'm saying? Given, getting over injuries is a very, very tough and mental part of the game. He came back last year, played one game, and he got worse, got hurt worse than before. I'm sure that's weighing on his mind. I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, as far as the Bengals, T. Higgins, questionable. Hayden Hurst, questionable. Those are the main two guys. Um, Higgins was limited all week. He, he'll, probably, he'll probably go. Hayden Hurst was limited the last two, sorry, uh, Wednesday, Thursday. And then on Friday today, he was quite, he was a DMP, did not practice. But come on now, this is, this is the Ravens. They drafted him. You know he want to play. So I'm thinking he's going to play too. But uh, so that's the little intro we'll give. And then, you know, whoever want to go first, let me know your thoughts about the injuries and how it affects the Ravens. Particularly, we got to start talking talk about Rashad Bateman. All right, man. So Rashad Bateman is looking like he's going to be out this week. Uh, once they said that he was in a walking boot, I kind of figured that it was not looking too good for him last week. Um, I think that's I think that's best. I, I actually don't agree with some players playing through injuries. Well, skill players. I say skill players for real playing through injuries because it's like it could get worse. So if it get worse, you know, now you now you what you was out for two to three weeks for could turn in the six to six to eight weeks or the whole season. So I'm 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 comfortable with him being out this week. Um I guess uh Demarcus Robinson will take it will step in and take his place or uh um let me see Demarcus Robinson or Devin Duvernay ob obviously um probably will fill in for that that role but the way our offense is set up um you know it's set up for like literally one receiver. It's kind of like a one receiver type wire, uh type setup for the for the X, the X guy. The, so I'm pretty sure that they they've taken reps at the X position and know what to do. And I think the Ravens might lead off with Demarcus Robinson and then we'll work uh Devin Duvernay in and hopefully uh you know the Ravens favorite uh James Prochet get some get some smoke this weekend. And uh as far as the as far as the Bengals, I'm expecting both of those guys to play. Um especially uh Hayden Hurst because um you know his time here was was very limited. It was limited, but we got him involved a lot. But he wanted more, so I could see this being like a like a get back game for him. You know, wanting to show his worth, even though it's kind of like we we knew we know your worth, but you know you you're not better than Mark Andrews, bro. <laughs> Feel me? Like you're good, but you're not better than Mark Andrews. But I could see him definitely playing and T Higgins. I could definitely see him playing because, you know, they they usually they usually do numbers against us. It, this could be a, a coming out party for T. Higgins. You never know. So I could see him, you know, forcing it. Yeah, and I mean on the injury side, um, of course, obviously Rashad Bateman. Um, but I'm just looking at my boy too, Justice Hill, because I mean that was kind of a nasty uh little play mid play you go down like that i'm curious to see you know what the actual extent of the injury is and what's going to be how long he's going to be out you know i mean it was nice to see gus edwards back on the on the practice field but again we don't know exactly what that timeline gonna look like so you know the running back position we still a little shaky i feel like we're almost back to where we were um uh jk you know had a decent little game going but you know, without anybody, you know, trying to split the reps or at least people um, more consistently splitting the reps like we had been, you know, curious to see how that's going to go. And, you know, with Sharp Bateman being out, again, that whole wide receiver team, the uh, squad, I'm 
looking for looking for them to step it up for real. Um, and on the Bengals side, extremely healthy team. Hayden Hurst is definitely playing. He got some in the tank for us. Um, and yeah, let me T Higgins going to play. So I mean, you know, that's pretty much it with them. And then, like I said, with the Ravens, we just need some guys to step up. Um, for this game in particular, because it's big rivalry. Uh, for sure, man. So I, I, you know, I agree. With, I agree with most of everything guys saying. So like, um, I feel like MP is going to play. I think Marcus Peters wants to be out there to take on that challenge of playing these guys. Um, you know, and like I said, Stanley's out, so he's out. Um, so as far as this goes with this game and Rashad Bateman being out, um, I'm looking for Devin Dumay to step up just because I feel like he's earned it. Um, he's been the second best receiver on this team, but it also comes down to the fact that Greg Roman has to. He has to scheme plays for wide receivers, and that's the main issue that I continue to see. Uh, you know, Andrews gets stuff for him all the time. You know, whatever you have, you want to design it up. There's plays designed for Andrews. There hasn't really, there's not really too many plays designed for wide receivers. You know, I think I looked it up a while ago. I mean, it probably still is true, but the Ravens are one of the lowest teams in using three wide receiver sets. So it's really just one wide receiver, three tight ends. It's it's one, it's two wide receivers, two tight ends. And even to that effect, if you're going to play a two tight ends, you're going to play a likely, you're going to play likely with Andrews and stuff like that. I need to see Isaiah likely get involved. I mean, we see you get a couple of shovel passes here and there. And I know all, all of a sudden the hands have been an issue for him, but um, I, I need to see more for him. Honestly, that's the guy I'm, I'm expecting to have a big game or I want to have a big game because I just don't think that Greg Rowan is just going to put it on the receivers. He, does, he hasn't done it before. Can't really expect it now. So, um, the big X factor on offense for me, Isaiah Likely. I mean, they're going to look at Andrews and things of that nature, but Isaiah Likely is a guy who can go off. It's it's about time he goes off, and I feel like prime time this could be his time for him. So, who you guys got for as far as like an X factor on offense? You think is going to be the guy that could go off? I want to see. Honestly, I want to see Devin Duvernay. I mean, again, he's going to be out there a little bit more and, you know, possibly taking on that um, that X. So I want to see him flourish, especially with all the attention being on him like it was on Bateman. Um, so I'm I'm looking for him to, to have a decent game. And, I mean, I'll add to it, but J.K. as well. I definitely want us to get the run game going and kind of, you know, get that one-two punch because, again, I mean, the Bengals aren't a bad team. They don't have the – to start like they had last year and you know how crazy they were last year. But I think that those two are really going to be the, the big one, especially to take some of that load off of Lamar too. Cause I mean, Lamar has been doing a lot. And also I think that we just need to find some consistency with both the run and the pass, especially going into the second half of the game, because I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm traumatized by it. That Miami to Buffalo, like good gracious. And how do we, I don't know how we keep it falling into this but something's got to give and at the very least let the run game click for the second half let the pass click for the second half let anything let's at least score so yeah that's my uh that's my take on it so as far as x factors go i i gotta go with whoever's gonna be that starting x this week that's the that's literally the x factor um we've been getting Pretty good production out of our receivers, I would say for the most part. Well, Duvernay and and uh, and Bateman, but um, like you said, we don't really scheme to receivers as much as we scheme to our tight ends and things like that. And if you look at that last play from last week, the whole defense ran to Mark Andrews. You know what I'm saying? So that's that should show you something right there. Every team is going to key on Andrews, so we need somebody else vertical to make plays. So I, I got to go with whoever's going to start at that X position, uh, at wide receiver, whether that be Duvernay, um, Demarcus Robinson, or what. Um, we got to help eight, bro. We got to help eight out. And, you know what I mean? So he can't do it by himself. The run game looked a little bit more solid last week. Like like we said earlier, Gus is back to practice, and it's only a matter of time till he's back. But, you know, eight can't do it by himself. So I'm I'm gonna have to say that the X factor this week is whoever's starting at that X receiver, whether that be Duvernay or Demarcus Robinson. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hear you guys. I hear you guys. I wish I just had, you know, a little bit more confidence in what you know they could do with the receivers. Because I mean, we talk about Tyler Wallace, James Brochet, and I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the guys. It's just the fact that, you know, you got these players, and we're all so quick to say, oh, these guys ain't it. They're trash. How do we know? They don't play. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, when you say a guy like Tyler Wallace is trash, James Brochet is trash, okay? I'm just talking about fans in general, not, not you guys. But how can you say that when they don't play? One. Two, these guys are on the roster. If they were bad, the Ravens would cut them. Ravens have no problem cutting guys. So if they won't cut them, why, you know, why are they here? You know what I mean? It, that's where it kind of gets that down that to that for me. It's like, why are these guys here if you just won't play them? It just doesn't make any sense. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to move on from that. So uh, as far as the Bengals defense goes, the guy that I'm looking out for this game, it's got to be Trey Hendrickson, man. Uh, he absolutely wrecked us both games last year. Um, and I would imagine he's going to spend a lot of time on Daniel Falele's side. So Daniel Falele goes from Von Miller to that Trey Hendrickson. It's no off days uh, for, for Falele. It's going to be tough. I mean, even Dietrich Wise, you know, was gave him some problems in the Patriots game. But I feel like last week versus the uh, the Bills, Falele held his own, man. When Von Miller was getting off, it was it was on Morgan Moses, honestly, you know, more than anybody else, and that's that's a, a whole other issue uh, in itself. So, but uh, Falele has a big challenge, you know, against Trey Henderson. This guy wins just off of pure effort and aggression. He don't stop, you know. I ain't gonna say he's the most technically gifted and all that stuff, but he, he try hard. He, he gets sacked by just just trying hard. So that's the guy I'm really looking out for. The Ravens can stop him from wrecking the game. They can have some success out there. Uh, so, who are you guys looking out for in the Bengals' uh, defense? I'm going to go with uh, number 30, Jesse Bates. You know, safety. Playing, he, he He's there. He's there free safety. He makes a lot of plays in, uh, you know, in the passing game. But I like I, I like to see us go at him. That's, let's prove it to us. Prove it to us, you, you really, what you say you are, you know? Um but that's the guy that I'm really looking out for in the in the Bengals secondary, um, and that's that's really about it. Um, of course, Trey Hendrickson. I mean, his game speak for itself. He a dog, you know what I'm saying? He's he's a straight up dog, and um, you know Jesse Bates. I, I feel as though that he going he's going to be, you know, keeping that eye on Mark Andrew Mark Andrews. You know, when he go out into them seams and whatever routes he do, he's going to be he's going to be watching. So they're going to key on Mark Andrews, especially with Bateman. Now they're going to key on Mark Andrews. So, again, somebody else in that exposition going to have to step up. But Jesse Bates uh, is is the guy to look out for on the uh, Cincinnati defense to me in the passing game for sure. Yeah, and I hate to sound redundant, but definitely Trey Hendrickson. But I look at it from a perspective of if Lamar really doesn't have a solid X for this game, at the very least give him some time to make decisions to, and to, to get the ball downfield or, you know, enough time to even be like, you know what, I just need to get out the pocket and go. So, you know, the pass rush, you know, team started, uh, just started with Miami. What was it, last year or so? When – um. They started blitzing us, and they, Lamar, quote unquote, got exposed. And now we're starting to see just a little bit, not all the time, but when it comes to that blitz, and when it comes to people just getting in the backfield in general, it gets a little flustered, especially if it's going on for you know a quarter or two. So I want us to be able to protect them, so that way, again, he can make a play, whatever that play is, you know, the Superman plays and whatnot. But um, that's who I really want to uh, key in on on the Bengals defense for sure. Yeah, yeah, un understandable, man, on, on, on both fronts, honestly. So, uh, you know, just thinking about Jesse Bates is a great call because obviously we saw Jordan Poirier last week. Did um, I think he caught both interceptions on Lamar Jackson, if I'm not mistaken. Um, not not that either interception was a really great safety play. I mean, you know, the fourth down play, Lamar kind of was late, uh, pressure in his face, all kinds of practice. So, you know, Poirier got that one. And then the tip interception, you know, he went up and got it. So, um, but yeah, you know, those guys, I got to look out for those guys on the back end. Now, where I really think this game is going to be won and lost. Ra uh, Ravens defense versus Bengals offense, man. And the Bengals uh, supposedly upgraded this offensive line, but it really hasn't uh, seemed like it as much. And the Ravens don't have a pass rush. So, 
something's got to give here. You know, who who's going to be that uh, overcome that? Odafi always had his first really good game, I would say, of the year last week versus the Bills, even though he still missed some plays out there. Uh, but it was his first really good game. Um, but as far as the Bengals' offense goes, I'm looking at one man, and he he wears number one, and that's uh, that's 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 Jamar Chase. Um, it doesn't need to be said what he did to us last year. Go watch the highlights. We don't got to talk about that. Um, but I'm looking at his stats so far this year, right? Pittsburgh, week one, 10 for 129, a touchdown, good game. Dallas, 5 for 54. Jets, 6 for 29. Uh, Miami, good game last week, 4 for 81, had a longer 36. So that he really had one big play in that game. I, I think if we're looking for anybody who's due for a big game, it's, it's Jamar Chase. And that's what I'm worried about. That's the guy who I'm looking out for. And then on top of that, you know, I'm thinking Marcus Peters is going to be back. He picks up a quad injury. It's like, oh, my. Now, the secondary that we was looking to have ain't exactly what we thought it was going to be. Um, you know, but, you know, hopefully, you know, Marcus Peters can cut some of that slack. So, but yeah, like I said, the guy I'm worried about, number one, Jamar Chase, man. Who, who y'all got on the Bengals offense? I'm going to go with Jamar Chase, too, bro. Like, it's no question. He 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 absolutely – Cooked us last year. Um, I mean, put up put up career numbers on us last year, and obviously we didn't have our best DBs out there. And you know, this year we'll we'll probably be closer to having our best DBs out there. So, you know, I definitely think that he is the offensive X factor for the for the Bengals right now. And like you said, he is due for a big game, and He's he's not easy to guard, bro. Let's be real here. And you know, one thing that worried me last week, but you know, he's a rookie, but you know, Jalen Armand Davis, he was he was a healthy scratch last week. So I'm not sure why he was a healthy scratch last week. I understand he has his shrug he had his struggles in the week the weeks prior, but I mean he's a rookie. Let him let him learn. Live, you gotta live and learn. It's trial and error. I mean it's not like they're going to help you scratch Kyle Hamilton, of course. I mean, he's the first-round pick, but, you know, um, I didn't understand that. But I'm pretty sure he'll be back this week. If not, then that's something to raise your eyebrows to. Um, but with, like you said, with MP getting that quad injury, you know, I wanted to see MP match, line up with, with Chase, talk that, talk that shit to him, you know what I'm saying? So I want to see that. But um, – we may it may be limited. MP might not play. We do see them twice a year, so you know. Um, yeah, I definitely think that number one is he's due for a big game, and he's probably he's most definitely that X factor on offense this 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 week. My green were having a little bit more than I expected to today. Um, nah, man, Jamar Chase is something that we always have issues, not just with him, but just those like speedy receivers. Remember Odell just did what he did to us. Tyreek, you know, we always have that issue with those speedy guys, but um, Jamar Chase and I think definitely Joe Burrow, they out for blood when it comes to us. After what they did last year to us, I'm sure they got the, they're beating their chest a little bit, thinking they're going to do the same thing. I don't think it's going to be that. But um, Jamar Chase is definitely going to be going for it. Um, you know, and Marcus Peters with the quad injury, you know, I'm hoping everything is good. And a lot of times, I mean, this might be on a tangent, but a lot of the pundits talking about, you know, Ravens defense, like the DBs especially, you know, give them some time, you know, they get in sync and so forth. But while I do believe that, one thing I'm afraid of is injuries. You can't really get in sync if people keep getting hurt, you know, it's on defense. So, you know, we have to try to find that, that sweet spot where everybody's, you know, in sync and everybody's healthy. And I, I really wish and hope that it's this game that we, you know, that we, you know, have that happen because this is a big game, especially I think this can kind of swing momentum a little bit for us. Um, but you know, I guess I guess we'll see. Let's get Jamar Chase to not touch the ball if we if we possibly can, because you know as soon as he touches, he's gone. So all right, so let's talk about this Ravens defense. We'll do our predictions and then we wrap it up. All right. So as far as the Ravens defense goes, um, like I said, in the trenches, somebody something has to give. Who's going to win on the defensive line? Is it going to be Odafi Owe? Is it going to be J.C. Pierre-Paul? 
Um, not even low key, but Justin Matabike is having a breakout season that we've been wanting him to have the last two years. He's having it. So I'm um, hoping for big things from him. You know, the nickname is finally earned. African Aaron Donald is in the building. He's here. You know what I mean? So we need we need a big game from him, okay? <laughs> Had to get that one in there. All right, no, but seriously. So X Factor on the Ravens defense, the guy that we paid seventy million dollars to. Marcus Marcus Williams. I almost said Marcus Peters, but anyway. Marcus Williams, man. Um, that safety play over the top, these big plays, these big play receivers getting down the boundary. Um, Marcus Williams has proven to be that safety blanket over top, that that guy that we haven't had at, at free safety since, you know, Earl Thomas left and things of that nature. Marcus Williams has proven to be that guy, and he's even even better. I mean, he's getting games with double-digit tackles and stuff like, stuff like that. Now, you don't always want your, your free safety tackling that much. That's usually a sign of bad things, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to talk about that that aspect of it. I'm just gonna say he gets guys to the ground. Um, so that's my guy. You know, it's easy to say Odafe away on the on the defensive line, but I'm looking for the guy we pay seventy million dollars to, man. That's that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely countering you here because I'm I'm going straight for the D line. That 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 front, whatever whatever type front we run in this week, bro, they have to get to the quarterback. They make the job easier for the secondary. It's just that it's it's like it's real simple. Like it's like one plus one equals two. You get what I'm saying? If the if the if we get in a decent pass rush, that means it's less time for our guys to cover. It's less time to have to worry about what Jamal Chase or T. Higgins or Taj Boy going to do. Or it's Tyler Boy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's less time. You know what I'm saying? So this this week's X Factor, I gotta go Odafi away. It gotta be O way, man. I need I need a sack, bro. I need it. I need at least I need more than one sack from this guy. I need some QB rushes or something. I need you to force him to make a bad decision. Let make him get rid of the ball before he wants to get rid of the ball. You know what I'm saying? Um we we haven't really seen that from him. He had a he had an up and down game last game. You know, it had the force fumble, which was a great play. Great play on a force fumble. But as far as Pass rushing, he didn't he didn't make much plays. He didn't make any he didn't make any any impact in the pass rush. And that's what we need him for. Um so that's that's my X factor this week. It's gonna be Odafe Owe. I need him to get to the quarterback. I need him to rush the quarterback, make the quarterback uncomfortable, make him get rid of the ball well before he wants to get rid of the ball. So our seventy million dollar guy can go snatch it out the air. You know what I'm saying? That's what I need. And I like your take, Evan. Um, for me, I want to see Patrick Queen. You know, <laughs> I, I do. I, I know. I know. I know. And watching, uh, you know, watching last week was, you know, something. Um, but I do want to see him, you know, get some consistency. And I do want him, you know, if I D line not really, you know, getting through there. I want him to be the one to get burrowed down or get him flustered or something like that. Because again, it's gonna have to start up front. Because I just don't trust our DBs at all. Uh, you know, again, that whole wait till they get in sync kind of thing, whatever. Yeah, yeah, but we ain't got the time for it right now. We got the Bengals coming up, and that's a you know potential contender. We got to start up front. I Quick do question, really like bro. I said. Quick question, bro. Quick question. Let me stop you just real fast. I ain't gonna keep you long, bro, but. Marlo been balling, bro. Marlon Humphrey's been balling. What do you know? Like he's been balling. We can't we can't keep blaming the DBs, bro. We can't keep doing that. We're not when our D line not getting no pressure. That's all I got to say. And I'm and you you're not wrong. You you're not wrong at all. You he the one that's really you know putting that on the on the back. Oh, you muted. All right, cool. But yeah, he's really been putting the DBs on his back, and it's a lot of everybody else. But you, you absolutely right about that. But we just gotta, we gotta get after him because again, no matter what, yeah, we got Marlon Humphrey doing his thing. But the rest of everybody, I just, I'm not trusting, and I'm not gonna sit there and try to make that excuse that well, we need to get pass rush. True. But at the same time, you kind of getting paid to not have these things happen, even if the pass rush ain't there. So. Um, yeah, I mean, Patrick Queen, you know, I, 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 I want to see something from Patrick Queen coming up. 
we're gonna get into predictions. All right, so real quick, that's very fair to say something from Patrick Queen. What I want to see Patrick Queen is McDonald. He's your he's he's your fifth rusher. That's all I want to see. He, he now you got you rush five with Patrick Queen. You got one on ones. Pierre Paul birthday left tackle. or Doctor birthday right tackle. As far as him in coverage, sayonara. I don't need to see it. Anyway, so um, as what we were talking about, um, Evan, Evan made a good point about the secondary. There have been these are they have been standout players in the secondary. Marcus Williams has been good. Marcus Peters has been good. Marlon Humphrey has been good. And much people want to criticize him because he's the first round pick. Kyle Hamilton has been good. Now the issue with Hamilton is they don't they don't want to play him that much. I think last week he had like twenty seven percent of the snaps. It's too much. It's too little. All right. I get Chuck Clark. Where's the green dot? Then take somebody else off the field. He needs to play. Even if it's just to get the reps, he needs to play. All right. Anyway, so off of that prediction time, man, here we go. Um, I don't typically I don't I don't really predict Ravens losses. I'm, I'm not going to put that in the air. I'm not going to do it. The Ravens could lose this game, but this is what I'm going to say. All right. Ravens have lost five straight games at home. Five. Going dating back to last year. Blown two leads this year. Collapsed twice. OK, but all right, there's always a but, right? Ravens are 18 and two in primetime football under John Harbaugh. We are wearing the all black uniforms. I know who cares, but hey, we went in there, man. Tradition is tradition. I care about it, too, Evan. I heard I, I care about it, too. All right. So primetime football, all black uniforms. Ravens want to redeem themselves after an embarrassing loss last week. Give me 27, 21 Ravens at home on primetime, man. What's your what's your prediction? All black, 820, Russell Street, you know what I'm saying? They got to come to the bank, you know? We rocking that all black again, 18 and 2, you feel me? Five straight home losses. We not about to make this six, bro. Ravens win 27, Ravens win 27, 10. I think I think we, I think that, I think we, you know, we shake it up for real. It get It's going to get real in that bank. Uh, Jimmy Jimmy Smith is the uh, ring of honor this week, I believe. You know, so don't hey, don't embarrass us out there, guys. Don't embarrass us. We ain't, I ain't yo. We need to. This is a. I ain't gonna lie. It's early in the season, but this is a must win game. This is absolutely a must win game. I I feel like this this game is gonna really. You know, last week was like that litmus test. This is really the this the real test right here. We going into week five. It's about to start getting real. I agree. This is this is the one that's gonna set the tone for the rest of the season, or at least a decent portion of the season. I got Ravens 31-27. Um, you know, when we like you said, when we wear them black uniforms, it's like superpowers. Um, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't a few years ago, weren't they wearing the black ones when Lamar went off on the Rams? Was that it? Because I have some yeah, odd yeah, reason I remember the color rush on color rush against the Rams. Okay, that was the color rush. Okay, yeah. No, it's you know those, especially in the prime time games too. It's just so many memories off of it. And I think that you know, especially with somebody like Lamar, when it's those those prime time moments, he shines. So I think that it's going to be a tough game. Um, I'm just hoping that everything is evenly spread out for us. I'm just not, I'm hoping that it's not a top heavy game where the first half we. You know, one of the best teams in the in the league in the AFC, and in the second half, we not. So, I'm definitely predicting us getting the 31, or somewhere in that ballpark. Um, with with the Ravens win, I don't think they're gonna embarrass us this week. Fingers crossed. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that all black game, that all black jersey was against the Colts when we came back and won. That was, I think he wore the, I think we wore all black that game. Now that you say it, that's absolutely correct. All right, so um, we're going to get out of here. I'm going to get my final thoughts, and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, Evan made a point. You guys both made great points. Uh, he said something that I wanted to say. Um, the, 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 what was it? the Miami game is 1 o'clock. The Buffalo game is 1 o'clock. This game is 820 national TV. All right? I'm going to sound like a parent right here. I got a daughter. Don't embarrass me in front of company. All right, all right Baltimore, don't, don't embarrass me in front of company now. Listen, we, we, do, we do what you do at the crib. Inside the house, but we outside now. We in front of company. Don't embarrass me in front of company. That's all I got to say about the Ravens, man. 
Um, so we're going to get out of here, man. You know, that's, that's a wrap for it. Uh, don't forget, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share the content, man. You know, we're going to be doing this every week. And I uh, appreciate y'all watching, man. It's your boy Gabriel, Evan, Evan. We all signing out. And uh, y'all have a beautiful day.